datafeedtoolbox.com. These articles are in here. There's specific articles you want to go through. Don't hop to this one first. You're, you're going to learn a lot of lessons if you do that. Uh, there's some other articles, and he does definitely uh, predefine those before you actually um, finish reading these articles. He'll say stuff like call outs, like, hey, check out this article first or this one to set up the data feed or use the campaign classifications. I can't stress that enough. Make sure to do that. Don't hop ahead. Some I read all over the place, and so I had to learn the hard way. But anyways, that said, first demo was coming from. Now I'm going to move on to the next one, and then I'll show you some of the basics of how I put this guy together, okay? Because I can guarantee you it will save you hours if you're new with this, but you have experience with R, and uh, either you know using Spark with R or Adobe API, especially clickstream data with R. Um, if you haven't, it could be a lot more difficult, and this might be essential to watching the video, so I just wanted to share. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple other models that he has in here with um, like allocation, linear, first touch, last touch, um, and then U-shaped allocation as well. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm loading um, the clickstream data in, and this time I'm actually loading in um, campaigns uh, classifications file and... I'm loading in each one of these uh, attribution models right now, and it's creating uh, some neat little data sets. And what I'm going to do at the end is show a side by side comparison of these different models as well, too. And this is all from that article, um, but I'm just running through it. It only takes a few minutes here to go through this, but most of the time it's actually just loading the data using Spark to crunch it. So, um, Really cool article though, and then this should give the side by side here. There we go. Oh, for some reason I have my header off here, but this should be, um, I believe, uh, linear, U shaped, and then first touch, last touch. And there's also a half life um, attribution model that I don't have in here that he had in his example. Um, but, anyways, I'm going to move on to the next one and not worry about that too much right this second. And just in case, if you were curious, that model right there was coming from this one. You can see that's the same table. You should get that with those headers at the end. Uh, it shows side-by-side -side comparison. And this is the multi-touch attribution. And then finally, I moved on to this last article, which was the attribution theory. And this one is very interesting, by far my favorite out of all of them. And so I'm just going through doing the motions on this one as well. I'm going to um, load these in here. And I'm going to break it up a little bit because, like I said, it caused issues with my computer earlier. And right now it's doing the game theory allocation model um, using game theory allocation package, which I can't remember if it was that one or I think it might have been the other one, the channel attribution package that um, Trevor commented. We don't know the actual algorithm breakdown on it. so. Um, as far as like validating that one, be careful. Yeah, it was actually the channel attribution package. Um, there's not much information on the algorithm beyond it. Um, so anyways, just be careful um, with some of this data. Um, so because we don't have the specific functions that are within that uh, package and know the exact breakdown of what's going on there. But this is the article I'm on right now. I didn't realize um, I think there's another one in here too even and this is the one where it's doing the grouping of the IPs um, it's cross device uh, which is really cool and it's using the IP address um, and looks like user ID um, I think this is where it's grouping um, like user ID to create a new user ID based on the uh, grouping of the IP address and user ID but mainly IP address is kind of a bind there between that and user ID that makes the new rollup for the new user ID. So I'm going to go back onto this guy over here, which I think I left off right there. And so I'm just going to, let's just go bigger, go home on it and finish it up. No errors, hoping no errors. <laughs> Love it. Keep going. All right. Oh, we had one at the end there. We're not going to worry about it right this second, but we'll go. This was probably one of my favorites here, though. It's um, pulling in the actual uh, channel stack to the conversion. 
and it shows like, okay, so this one, um, it looks like was just affiliates. There were six conversions using only affiliates and then looks like a touch point of affiliates and then came back through another affiliates campaign. Um, this one was internal. Uh, really cool though. I really like how this is um, built. But yeah, I have to cut this video short because I want to be able to show you how I put it all together. Um, so um, anyways, there's you know some other neat data sets that pull up as well in here as you can see um, and it's all attributable back to those articles and let me just move on to showing you how I did all this so you can do it too if you have access to your data feed our studio and have the spark um, extension as well as um, API um, and they don't even need API access actually you can just basically pull in all your um, raw data files into our start hashing away all right so i'm going to show you real quick how i got this set up basically you want to get your data feed files whether you've got them already set up with cron jobs and you're sending them over to like an s3 bucket or if you're going to set up new data feed files big caveat gotcha here make sure you grab only the data points you need that's not to say like only grab those data points you might need some others but don't grab all 999 columns if you don't need them do yourself a favor and your computer a favor um, because you very well could uh, crash it if you try to do too much at once because it takes up a lot of RAM. R is using a lot of RAM. So anyways, that said, really as I'm doing is I'm pulling in my uh, data feed files for just like five days worth of data. You obviously are going to want more data um, and so it's really important to not use all 999 columns. If you use like 10 columns, you could probably process, you know, 50 or 100 days worth of data um, from your site but that's just a big gotcha and then also really the only other file you're using is your classifications um, file and really you just can do a browser export or you can do an FTP export with that and it's not too difficult and it's pretty straightforward you just go to your data feeds section you know when you go up here you go to data feeds and then it's going to show your list of all your data feeds and you go and click on one of them and you can go in here and hit download CSV. It's going to give you the headers because every data feed file, the, the zip files, they're supposed to come with the headers and you can match them up. But in my case, I didn't have that option. Um, at least my data feed that I was playing with wasn't set up that way. So I went and I grabbed it from the data feed uh, portal. So if you need to, that's what you can do because really all I did was I grabbed it and then I did a transpose and threw it right above my data feed file data to where I could see, okay, here's this metric column, here's this metric column. And ultimately what I did was I had um, matched them up with uh, the different data points that I needed to grab. You can see here, this is row 963 for visit num. Um, and so that's kind of important because one, you need your data feed clickstream data. Two, you need to know, you know, where these data points are and to, you know, basically declare some and set up some naming conventions of friendlier names for those columns. And then uh, three, the other thing is, is you need your classifications um, file, which is in one of his demos where he's matching up the key to the post campaign. And he's using the key from the campaign's classifications file. And ultimately how you do that is also pretty simple. You just go into here and you go to your classification importer and you do either the browser export or FTP export. You can do browser export if it's less than like 50,000 rows. And so really you just go in there, click on browser export, select your site, select your um, which variable. And in this case it's campaign and then make sure to select the right date range of whatever clickstream data you're analyzing. If you're analyzing the months of August and Feb through February, then you want to get August through February. If you're just doing the month of February 2018, then just do Feb to 2018 to Feb 2018. And then just go down here and hit export file. But again, this is for smaller sites. If you have a bigger site, you need to go to your FTP export and set it up that way. Okay. And that's basically it in a nutshell for setting up like your environment. You know, you want to set this up as your working directory, your working environment when you're in R which he's got those instructions as well in his um, example. And in my script, I'm going to probably share it, but it's all the same stuff that he has up on the articles. But <clears throat> basically just going through the motions here real quick 
to try to keep this video under five minutes. It's pretty much just um, connecting to Spark after you, you want to install Spark and then you also have to install dplyr and then um, you have to load them, uh, those libraries for those packages and it's connecting to them and then it's what it's doing is pulling the data in on the way uh, for creating these allocation models and uh, attribution models. Um, as well as, um, I think like a, there's a visitor ID rollup um, and aggregation at the visitor ID level, high level overview of your visitors as well. Too. Other than that, in a nutshell, that's pretty much all you have to do is, you know, grab those files, extract them, and then grab your classifications file and just make sure you figure out where your headers are by using those examples or um, using the headers uh, file that comes with the actual zipped um, data feed file.